I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Vinod Manaharan, the CEO of Jax Network. Vinod, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you, Ashton, for having me here. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into Jax Network, uh, the ecosystem that you've developed, and yeah. the unique perspective you're bringing to stablecoins. I would love for you to kick it off for us with just a, an overview of Jax Network, and, and then we can dive into those details. Sure. Thanks for the introduction. I'm excited to be here too. So I'll give you guys a bit of update, you know, for you and your uh, viewers about what our project is about. So we are a Bitcoin merge mined stablecoin. And in a nutshell, that's what we do. If you look at the other stablecoins, they're algorithmic. Like you look at Terra, there's DAI, and they have no bounds. Like you can print as much uh, Terra as you want. If you're a Luna holder, you can manipulate the markets. So it's basically even DAI, you put up collateral and then you issue DAI. So it's like you take power from the elected officials and then you give it to someone in a decentralized DAO. Okay, although it's a DAO, the only thing you get is transparency, but they're still unbounded in terms of how they manage things. And it has a bunch of risks. So we at Chax mm -hmm. Network build a completely natural resource bounded stable coin. That is, you know, an extension of the Bitcoin protocol. And we also solve scalability problems in the Bitcoin network. So in a nutshell, that's what our project is about. Of course, you know, during the course of this call, I'll give you more information as you have doubts or questions. <laughs> Sounds great, Vinod. And yeah, I would love to learn just a little bit more on how specifically having this merge mining with Bitcoin uh, allows you to solve those problems that, that you've obviously uh, pinpointed in these other stable coins that are in the market. Right. So interesting question. So Bitcoin, uh, by default, a lot of people first thing, you know, disclaimer first, a lot of people say that merge mining is an increase in the block size. You know, it leads to more centralization. Uh, for those skeptical people, I ask them to read our paper because we have created a new reward function, uh, which kind of equitably, we call it equitable merge mining, wherein like the uh, nodes get rewarded based on the effort they put into verification of the blocks and the mining of the blocks, right? So that's mm -hmm. how uh, we still keep our merge mining in a decentralized fashion. Now, how does that fix the problems that other people have? So our coin issuance is very unique, meaning that in our network at a top level, you have Bitcoin as the uh, anchor shard, and then you have a beacon shard, which is used for communication within our universe. And then we have a bunch of transactional shards where coins are printed. So when I talk about merge mining, what's happening is uh, miners are merge mining Bitcoin, which is the anchor shard, along with our beacon shard and the transactional shards. And how it works is that miners choose to get either, so they get transaction fees across all three, net, all three shards, Bitcoin transaction fees, JaxNet, which is our asset coin transaction fee, which is mined on the beacon shard, and they get the JAX transactional fees. JAX is the stable coin in our network. By the way, our network has two coins. One coin is a JAX net coin. It's a beacon chain coin, which is the asset coin. And there's JAX coins, which are stable coins and mined on the shards. So as a miner, you're getting transactional fees across all three networks, the transactional shards, beacon shard, and Bitcoin. Now, interestingly, the miners have to make a choice. Before they start mining, they say, okay, I'm going to get Bitcoin and the asset coins or I'm going to burn both of these things and I'm going to get the transactional coins. Mm -hmm. So without getting into the technical details of it, our protocol through a decentralized Oracle, which is existing within the blockchain, that is the hash rate of the network. So if you're burning, let's say one Bitcoin today, our protocol will issue you, let's say 30,000 Jax coins on the shards, right? So mm -hmm. this way, you're bounded because you cannot keep printing coins because of market manipulation, because Bitcoin price is decided by the market. And the Bitcoin, it's, it's, the price is even manipulatable, but we issue coins based on the hash rate of the network. So as more miners join the Bitcoin network, the higher will be your stable coin issuance if you burn Bitcoins, right? Mm -hmm. So you are like naturally bounded by natural resources, but compare it with the case of DAI, if Ethereum is, let's say, $2,000, you put in Ethereum as collateral in DAI, you could print about, let's say, 1,250 DAI, for instance, right? And if Ethereum drops below 1,250, now DAI goes into an emergency shutdown. And this is one of the problem they have, right? Mm -hmm. 
On the other side, you look at Terra, it's completely not backed by anything, you know. Uh, Terra has Luna, and Luna price goes up, they decide to, you know, they have something called seniorage, they burn Luna and create Terra USD, but, you know, in reality, this is all manipulatable by the holders of Luna, and it's not naturally bounded. So this way, we put a lot of controls on the stable coin issuance. That's one of the problems we fix. I mean, I'm not even going to go into USDT and stuff, which are like uh, collateralized by commercial paper. Uh, so, 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 yeah, so let's leave that aside for a minute. Let's not get it a bit political. So it's going to be that. So that's one way how we solve that. Now, when it comes to scalability, they don't even try to solve that because they're like private blockchains by itself. DAI operates as a set of contracts on top of Ethereum. So the scalability itself is limited by Ethereum. We are our own, we have our own native blockchain housing our stable coins and we have proof of work sharding to bring about scalability. So we differ from these uh, existing stable coins in a way that we are extremely bounded and we scale, right? So this is the key difference between the existing projects and the one we have. Mm -hmm. Great explanation, Vinod. And yeah, it's really interesting that your team has come out with the a beacon chain um, connected to Bitcoin. And I guess that means that you're really backing on the security of the network uh, for Bitcoin and, and the hash power and to have merged mining where Bitcoin is the strongest network in, in the blockchain industry. Uh, to be able to back that on to Jax sounds like the strongest way to protect the network. But then obviously there's scalability issues with Bitcoin and not being able to go past uh, a few transactions uh, per yeah. second. So having your own chain to solve that um, how, how does that work where you're, you know, you're backing on Bitcoin for the security, but then you're actually utilizing the JAX uh, whole blockchain that you've created for the transactions? Yeah, so good. So you actually asked very interesting questions. So, so, it's, so it goes like this, right? So let's look at how the dollar scales, you know. So, so one thing to add is that we not only get the security of the Bitcoin network, we also get the liquidity of Bitcoin. Because think about it, if we have our own blockchain, then we have to go get listed on 100 exchanges, do market making, create liquidity for our coins. Because we are issuing coins based on burning Bitcoins, our coins are mathematically related in price to the Bitcoin. So we know, so as long as there's Bitcoin liquidity in the market, our coins automatically get liquidity. This is one of the advantages we also have on top of getting the security of the uh, Bitcoin network, right? So when it comes to scaling, the problem with scaling is the data availability problem. Now in Ethereum, like Vitalik has been promising scaling for like five years now, uh, because the problem with scaling is that data availability is a very difficult problem. If you shard the network, you can either centralize the system and have no shards, which is the route that Solana guys have taken. You know, they simply say, hey, forget about it. We have a super node. Everybody trusts the super node and we'll be good to go. So that's fine, you know, except that you lose censorship resistance. Now in a decentralized network, if you want to keep censorship resistance, you need to have sharding of some level. And the problem with sharding is the data availability. One shard does not know what's happening on the other shard. Since it's money itself, they're unable to reach consensus. You can have spent some money on one shard and then try to use the same money on another shard. Now the other guy needs to check what you're doing, right? So what we do is we avoid that problem with math. How do we do that? So let's look at the dollar. You have like $10 in your pocket. I have a $10 bill in my pocket. They are not unique, you know, they're not the same. So what is it that connects them is they have a universal exchange rate. The US government says that a dollar bill is equal to a dollar bill. Now in a decentralized network, there's no centralized authority to do that. So what we do is our coin issuance of JAX coins are based on the hash rate of the network. So let's say you spend uh, you computed two power 64 hashes, and there is proof on that in the block, uh, uh, the, the block number itself, you know, the block hash is proof of that. So if you spend two power 64 hashes, you have one coin, regardless of what shard you participate in. So this way, all the coins across all the shards have a universal exchange rate. Then we go about establishing an exchange agent ecosystem, which is like an atomic swap, where they swap one to one between all the shards, and as long as your balance is fine, you don't need to worry about the other guy because he's checking that his balance is fine at one to one. So we kind of avoid the data availability problem with math. And this is how we bring about scaling 
through an external blockchain uh, why we decided to have our own you know beacon shard is because we need to make a few tweaks to the bitcoin protocol for us to operate mm -hmm. and of course it's you know bringing tweaks to the bitcoin protocol is almost impossible they have been discussing taproot for a long time we have taproot integrated into our beacon shard so so we decided to have our own you know ecosystem uh, our own beacon chain that is anchored to the bitcoin chain and we continue to bring stability and scalability to the bitcoin network itself so this is in a nutshell i mean of course there is much details we've been working on it for 3 years so if you want more information feel free to check our academic paper that's available on our website hmm great explanation vinod again and thank you for you know sort of summarizing that and it is it is very technical so i appreciate that that short version uh, and i'm glad that you have those academic academic uh, research papers available as well and you did mention there the liquidity uh, and the having the stable exchange rates and i'm curious in terms of the adoption uh, for jax and the liquidity and, and access to it has this helped get it to exchanges and get it accessible to people who want to use it as an alternative to some of these stable coins that have been around for a long time so we're still in a testnet phase because we're a proof of work network you know we can't mine our coins ourselves unless miners do that so we're in testnet phase we still have some uh, improvement coming in terms of our merge mining patch because when you m mine bitcoin uh, then you let's say use 100% of your hash rate when you mm -hmm. merge mine let's say our network along with bitcoin you might lose some hash rate so we are patching that to minimize that loss and then we'll onboard miners and we're still in a testnet phase so as soon as we get to mainnet we'll find out but we are confident that see we can i can mathematically give you an exchange rate between bitcoin and our jacks coins and asset coins right so so i don't see that liquidity should be a problem for us for adoption mm -hmm. but you know still you know we're still in the early stage i think i'll be able to answer this uh, question the data by october when our network is live we plan to get listed then on many exchanges and uh, i'll be able to give you precise information then as to how we are doing with market adoption and how the tying to bitcoin is helping with our liquidity problems and how much market share are we capturing from other stable coins definitely okay well thank you for that and i know that your team has been working on this for years already and i can tell that you've put a lot of work into it and really thought it out because it is important to build the foundation properly when you're building a stable coin like this so i would love for you to give a glimpse into you mentioned their october launch just the roadmap for the rest of this year what do you still have to do and then you'll launch and is there anything else that are uh you're going to take immediate steps of action after the launch yeah so yeah so interesting you know our guys are right now in miami there's a mining disrupt uh, event happening there so we are there to seek uh, commitments from miners in fact we had a couple of calls with miners today who are interested in merge mining our network even some mining pools want to integrate this so we can get on board as way to them so we are getting commitments from miners launching our main net and it leads me to a discussion with uh, i had an interesting discussion with uh, the head of investments from visa from the for the middle east region and he told me we not look you, okay you have a decentralized stable coin but people are happy with the dollar so we said that okay uh, we need to somehow soft peg it to the dollar in the beginning for people to understand what it is because maybe it's too early for a decentralized stable coin that is based on the cost of hash rate right so what we do after the mainnet launch is we are working with our partners distributed lab they're famous for building you know financial systems they're building us a uh, usdj which is like a stable coin that's backed by proof of on chain reserves of jax coin so let's say you create a usdb but it's backed by bitcoin and you have bitcoin on chain right but the problem there is that bitcoin price could drop and you don't have enough money to pay off all the withdrawals should that arise right so because we are a decentralized stable coin we are able to hold on chain reserves in our stable coins and issue a usdj so as soon as our main net goes live we're launching this kind of usdj to and circulate it in the market so that we can bring about adoption so then the next quarter let's say q1 2022 will be focused towards market making to bring this usdj to adoption then eventually as we grow uh, we have a uh, setting for daos so we have a we're writing a paper on it which we have new consensus mechanisms for running decentralized autonomous corporations uh, through proof of equity and proof of stake as on layer 2 right even our own company we are going to run it through proof of equity so kind of we build a 
decentralized validator set based on who's burning coins. Let's say, you know, we agree that we'll build a DAO wherein the validator set is based on people burning Bitcoins. You burn 10 Bitcoins, then you are like 100% uh, shareholder of this DAC or DAO. I burn 10, then we both become 50-50%. Somebody else burns 10, then we become 33.3. So you dynamically build the shareholder's head and you have a consensus based on that on layer two and you run your own organization. So, so you, you can expect you know DAOs and DACs and related tools to come into action from Q2 2022. And then, you know, as our coins go up, then we'll probably get into ecosystem growth with some grants, you know, uh, getting some projects to build on top of our protocol. So yeah, in the short run, it's the main net and this USDJ stable coin to bring about initial adoption of our network. So mm -hmm. these are the immediate That sounds great, Vinod. I'm looking forward to seeing that launch and then getting it into the market. And yeah. as you continue to develop out, get into the market, and then, as you mentioned, focus on market making, uh, are there other, are, are you reaching out for other strategic partnerships, uh, exchanges, maybe more team members, or just users of the platform? And what are your goals around expanding? Right. So right now we are getting into partnerships, but right now, like I said, our immediate goal is the mainnet launch. So we are right now getting into uh, mining partnerships. Like I said, we've partnered with Distributed Lab. And in fact, an interesting discussion, I met uh, Professor Scott Storneda in Dubai. He's actually, uh, he was the inventor of co-inventor of blockchain technology. And they had a, yeah, he was mentioned in the Bitcoin paper like three times out of the eight references that were there. And, and I was talking to him about this and he felt that we are critical infrastructure for the Bitcoin ecosystem itself because scalability and stability are some of the biggest problems, right? So right now we've decided, okay, let's first solve these two problems. So for us, we are seeking partnerships in terms of mining pools. We have some partnership with Distributed Lab for building this USDJ for us. And, you know, we're getting investments. Like today I have another call after this one uh, where, you know, we're going to talk to a couple of VC funds. We have some former uh, European Union uh, member of parliament who's invested in our company. So a lot of things are coming in. Um, happy to, you know, you can you can keep uh, updated yourself by, you know, looking at our website. We constantly keep adding partners and doing press releases. And yeah, so so these are the kind of partnerships we're doing now. You know, somebody's watching here, you're into Bitcoin mining. Please reach out to us so that, you know, I'd be happy to see how we can uh, work together. Definitely, Vinod. And I was just going to ask about that in terms of, you know, mining partnerships or just users. Uh, or people that are interested in, in following along and getting involved potentially in whatever way they can, do they just go to the website or do you have socials or what is the best way to get involved into the JAX community? Right. So, so you can go to our website. There's a resources section where we publish all our papers. There's a Telegram chat. If you come in, you know, we try to be very connected with the community. Uh, so, so, so we are like very community friendly people. You send a message on the community chat. I will personally maybe answer you within like an hour if I see the message. So, so you can join our Telegram chats. That's one of the fastest ways to reach out to us. We're setting a Discord group for especially miners and developers, but that's more like tech support, right? Mm -hmm. So the community people, you know, the Telegram chat would be the best place to catch up with us. Sounds great, Vinod. I will leave the website link Telegram, Discord, everything in the description box below. All the best with the continued uh, work and launch for JAX Network. It looks exciting. I will be following along and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you so much, Ashton. Thank you for having me here.